there. Hi. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm so glad we get a little bit of time to talk and tell your story. Yeah, thanks for having me and thanks for reaching out. Yeah, this is great. Well, why don't we start by telling everybody a little bit about yourself, your name, where you're from, what you do. Cool. So my name is Ko and I live in New York City. I am right now 32 years old, going on 33. And I'm an editor, writer, and yoga teacher. Oh, that's amazing. So how did egg freezing come into your life? How did you learn about it? Yeah, I found out about it first through a women's group that I'm involved in, and someone was really open about their experience and was sharing some information. So I was curious, and I kept it kind of tucked in the back of my head. Um, and then the next gynecologist appointment I had, I you know, brought it up, and I was told I had nothing to really worry about at the moment, but I got my AMH levels checked out anyways, and well, that's you know, great. it was fine. But I kept it, again, like kind of in front of me. Mm -hmm. Like in the back of your mind, just thinking like, oh, what was your first thought when you heard about egg freezing? Did it seem like science fiction? Did it seem like it made sense? Yeah, it was so new to me. I am just a naturally curious person. So I was like, oh, what is this all about? And um, it's so cool that, you know, you can do all these things with technology these days. Um, but you know, just being unfamiliar, I was kind of like, this isn't natural, so to speak, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I tried to keep an open mind as, a, as I was learning about it. Um, yeah. Did you tell your family that you wanted to do this or was that part of the discussion and the conversation that you explored? Yeah, I was kind of nervous, um, telling my mom about it. But surprisingly, um, she had heard about it before, too. So when I told her, she was like, oh, well, I wish, you know, you could have a baby right now. Um, but anyways, I support you if you want to do it. So um, it was like a relief that I didn't have to kind of explain the technical part and also um, knowing that I had her emotional support. Yeah, or her acceptance. It sounded like she was very supportive of, of the choice. Mm -hmm. And probably wants to be a grandma, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Let's dive a little bit into like how you began the process and what what clinic you picked and how you picked it and like what process you went through. And, and, and then a little bit about like how you went public yourself and started that really fun Instagram account that we met on and, and just talk about your journey a little bit. Sure. Um, so... I actually had brought it up with my boss, my male boss, um, and he was like, are you sure, like, we don't cover it at work? And I was like, I'm pretty sure. And I was like, you should check again. I was like, okay. So I checked, and I was like, well, even if they don't cover it, like, I think it's an investment that, you know, I want to take on. Um, so I looked into um, NYU. Um, New York University and I was like okay it's reputable um, I'm, I'm gonna dive in and start you felt comfortable seeing there. possible yeah you like the yeah. doctor so I once I got into NYU I was like I don't know these doctors I just kind of eeny meeny miny mode um, but then um, you know my HR person didn't really know um, she was like I think things have changed so I just waited and they the NYU nurses and administration just sent in the application and then I got a letter in the mail and it was like getting into college or something. I was like, Oh, it's a thin letter. Like, what is this? Um, but then I opened it and it said I was covered up to um, a large amount and I was like, okay, like definitely what a do blessing. Oh my yeah, God. So I got really lucky. Um, and, you know, it's one of the best things I did at work or through work. Yeah. Um, and you have a really great story because, I mean, the fact that you even talked to your boss about this, which is very personal to do, right? And then he's like, hey, I think you should go get coverage. Like, keep asking because I think we have coverage. For him to encourage you that way was amazing. 
Yeah, he's, you know, uh, a little bit of a different kind of a boss. Um, and for me, I have been more of an open book. Um, not all the time, but every time I have been vulnerable, I see that so many doors of connection open up for me. Um, so this started a couple of years ago as a writer when I would write personal essays and, you know, they had like strong takeaways um, and very like meaningful moments. Messages. Yeah, yeah, meaningful moments. Um, you know, people would be really, like send me notes or like, be like, I thank you for writing that or something. And, you know, even the way I learned about egg freezing was in this very closed off women's group. You know, it wasn't like out on a public forum. Um, and even some public forums were like anonymous, right? With usernames. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, well, um, you know, actually, I just remembered I used to um, work on a cancer blog through NPR. And yeah. I remember um, Larry, who, you know, wrote about and hosted yeah, his segment. Show. Yeah. Um, he was so open and honest and it was such a wonderful thing and um, people really responded to that. So, um, I've seen firsthand how being open yeah. um, can wonderful. impact others. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I mean, I think that being public and is very freeing, you know, like <laughs> I felt like in my journey freezing multiple times that, uh, every single time I talk about it, I feel like it's lethargic in some way. And like, it's therapy. Like, yeah. It yeah. It's feel totally better. Uh, cathartic. Like writing is for me. Um, and you know, I started it not knowing like what was going to happen. Oh, sure. Yeah. It's not like you had a plan. Fine, right? Like yeah. I could find very low eggs or like what, but like, it was also a documentation process for me. And a lot of times I find that people talk about things way after they happen, if there's a good result or yeah. if, yeah, if, you know, if it's happens. positive or it comes to some kind of uh, thing, they'd be, sh they'd be glad to share instead exactly. of like, we don't know how this is going to turn out. So, but we're sharing it regardless of the outcome. Yeah. And like, I knew I, would want some emotional support during the process, you know, having researched, like there could be hormonal effects, you know, mm -hmm. and just having, um, friends and strangers like cheer me on, um, yeah. through eggy diary Instagram account in which I just like kind of vlogged and like, like just had fun with it. Um, as much as I could. Yeah. yeah. How, how did, how were you on the hormones and the meds? And then like, what was the results after you froze? Yeah. Um, so I think on the uphill with the hormones, like I actually enjoyed it. Um, another friend of mine joined me kind of along the same timeline. Oh, that's nice when you have friends to do it with. Yeah. Yeah. And she was like more emotional than I was, mm. but I also consciously like, um, prepared you know, a lot of meditation and took a lot of walks. So I wouldn't like be carrying around a lot of anxiety. Um, but surprisingly, like, the actual procedure was um, pretty easy. You know, you're out yeah. with anesthesia. And um, because I had started with a good level, um, they didn't pump me up too much on the hormones, oh, okay. unlike my friend. So she actually got more eggs than I did. And I tried not to feel bad about it. Oh, um, well, quality over quantity, maybe. That too, right? Um, so, and then afterwards, like, I like totally cried right after the, the surgery. Um, and I was bloated for a while, like really uncomfortable Me in too. my body. Like yeah. this is weird. Um, so Did you have a hard time not working out during the, the two weeks that you were stimulating yourself. Yeah. As, um, a yoga teacher, like I couldn't even, um, get into your poses. I was instructing, but it did, I usually walk like three to five miles a day and I forced myself to walk like seven to 10. Wow. Uh, so that was like, yeah, good for me. that's productive. And walking, I feel like does help. It's just, you have to be gentle. Yeah. It's meditation for me. Yeah. Um, so. That's great. And then what, um, what were your results? Do you want to share that? Yeah. Um, I had about a dozen, um, and two were like, not quite fully formed yet and they could form 
a little bit later. So they um, matured up and froze? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, you know, they're safe and sound somewhere. And, um, you know, my friend had like 20, uh, which is great. Um, So my doctor afterwards said, you know, you could do it again. But again, like, it's your backup plan. Yeah. And at least it is for me. And I know some people are sensitive to that language. Mm -hmm. But um, for now, um, I'm also not the same job anymore. But for now, I'm okay with what I did. And it is, I acknowledge, a big process for your body to go through, like yeah. tricking it that it's pregnant. Um, so I wanted to do it while I was healthy and in a good place, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Um, and I'm okay with not doing another round for now. Maybe maybe if I need to again, Um yeah, yeah I'm you glad have plenty of time to do it again. It doesn't have to be right away. I actually had over two years between each cycle. Wow. So I don't think I don't think you have to think of it as like you have to hurry up and do it again. Because maybe it gives your body more time to breathe in between cycles. Maybe we're not meant to just do these IVF treatments back to back to back, you know? Like I know people I know. do, but it's got to be taxing and financially debilitating oh yeah for sure i mean i'm also not at the point where i could do it on my own now yeah Uh, so so yeah we'll see life is life is interesting i never grew up like thinking like i'm gonna produce my ex one day one day right did did you always imagine like having a partner and getting married or was that part of your plan and your like maybe value system that your family brought you up in yeah, um, I like to describe myself as a traditional idealist. So that's um, a cool title. I like it. Yeah. I might, I might adopt that. That's a great. Yeah. So I do, you know, want to get married and have um, raise a family, um, and ideally the marriage before the baby. Yeah. But I'm also like open minded and flexible, and you know, however life kind of develops. Yeah. Uh, do you date or are you looking for the for the person that would be your parenting partner? Um, yes, and that is so important to me that um, whoever I'm involved with um, would want to raise a family with me, um, but not letting that be like the only the reason. Factor. Yeah, yeah, like I want to create a life out of love. Yeah, um, that's again, nice. the idealist in me. But yeah, so I am um, dating again. I actually was dating somebody during the egg freezing process. Oh, how was that? So supportive. He was so supportive. He even distracted me while I was like doing my shots. He walked me because I was like really nervous to my egg um, retrieval procedure. And then my um, sister, my friend, came to pick me up. Yeah, and it didn't work out hmm. with the guy. Um, But I'm so grateful for that time that he was around. Yeah, I bet that was a very bonding, unique bonding experience that, and I think it's good to teach men, especially men, um, not just women, how to be a supportive partner when you're going through something like that. And you're not trying to get pregnant, but it's all about, you know, working on the family piece of your life, that puzzle. Yeah, and not just um, partners, but also guy friends. Yeah. That I they were like, oh yeah, my other... So that we could teach them what's involved. Yeah, because you never know when they might have to be in a partner shoes situation. Right, in that same type of role, just with their significant other. That's mm-hmm. great. Oh my goodness. Okay, so you have the Instagram account diary. Remind me, Egg, Eggy Diary, Eggy. and Egg means baby in Korean. Hence. Oh wow, that's so special. <laughs> That's really cool. Thanks for sharing that. Of course. Oh my goodness. This has been so much fun. Thank you for sharing your story. And we'll have to follow you online. Yes, please. Um, I, with encouragement of my fans, um, I'm I'm continuing the Instagram account as a way to still stay open and document my journey in life. Um, Any of the little struggles that I have. Um, Like recently I had uh colposcopy oh my gosh Um, so like you know it's like life is full of surprises and struggles um so i'm just 
kind of like staying strong and open and hopeful throughout it. So thank you again for, you know, sharing people's stories. And um, yeah, this is a fun conversation. Yeah, thanks so much. Well, have a great day. We'll keep up with you online. Okay. Bye for now.